You know, when, when, when John first reached out uh, to have me talk about this particular topic, um, I actually decided that I'm not going to do a bunch of slides. Uh, this is the only slide I'm going to have up. The, um, you know, I'm, I'm a lot more of a, of a beer, coffee kind of a guy, and I think this particular topic is, is really more of a conversation. Um, it's a conversation that I think is, you know, less about presentation and details and just more about uh, a way to think about um, yourself and your family and those that matter most to you as you started a company, running a company, uh, etc. So the reason I brought the chair out here is we're going to pretend that we're all at a pub right now and we're having uh, a beer or several beers uh, for that matter and um, we're just going to sit and have a little, a little chat. So the, the first thing my, I guess my handlers uh, told me to do uh, in a presentation is to establish credibility or relatability to the audience and I, I you know, I read the presentation book. So this is essentially essentially my, my credibility spiel. Um, so I'm a divorced dad. I have a 14-year-old daughter, an 11-year-old daughter, and a 9-year-old daughter. And for those of you who can count and know sexes, that's three girls. Um, and uh, you should also be aware that at some point in the not too distant future, all three of them will be teenagers at the same time uh, in the house. But uh, I digress. Um, I have an ex-wife. Uh, her name is Susan. I get along with her fabulously. Uh, I have a girlfriend who also has three kids. I have uh, two sets of parents. I have a biological set of parents. I have an adoptive set of parents. I have two cats. I have a startup with five employees, 16 investors, and um, frankly, I'm, I'm a pretty damn happy guy. So I, that's basically my work-life balance or things that go on to the uh, teeter-totter, uh, essentially, for that. Um, it, it's interesting, you know, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a psychotherapist or a counselor, um, but the, the phrase work-life balance is kind of strange for me because I never really think of it. It kind of has this built-in assumption that you have to give up one in order to achieve the other or success in one you know means that you're unable to be successful uh, in the other and you know for me it's really I guess work-life balance is really more of a story it's really more of just kind of a way of life and so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm basically just gonna tell you my story and I'll walk you through kind of the setup we'll talk about some of the lessons that I learned and um, hopefully you'll walk away with some stuff to, to think about and some stuff that's actionable uh, for you regardless of whether you're an investor whether you're in a startup or, you know mid-sized company etc so um, with that let's uh, let's go ahead and proceed with the story so um, so as chapter one of the story would be the dream so for me I think it's I've been in technology up here in Seattle for about 20 years and you know pretty early on I I had this dream and this desire to be a, an entrepreneur I started my career at Microsoft and um, you know I just I saw kind of what was happening with technology and for whatever reason I just I kind of decided I just wanted to be a CEO or I wanted to start a company someday it seemed like you know it was a noble thing to do captain of industry and so why not go off and do that and I, I actually had a, a fairly systematic plan that I was executing I tried to go from Microsoft to another startup to understand what an early stage startup would be like I then went to real networks <clears throat> to get a sense of kind of you know a slightly later stage startup see obviously what the, what an IPO process was like um, I ended up going to another small company then BEA that got by, bought by Oracle and then I um, then I landed as an entrepreneur in residence at Ignition Partners. And, you know, I, you know, having worked at Microsoft, here I am walking the halls and there's like, you know, it's Brad Silverberg and Cam Marveled and, you know, John Connors. And I was, you know, frankly, I was kind of punch drunk and starstruck. Um, it, 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 for me, kind of felt like, okay, I, I had come of age or here I was on the precipice of being a high tech entrepreneur CEO. And, and quite frankly, it was, it was pretty exhilarating. I mean, here were these individuals talking to me about, you know, and brainstorming on how to start a company and how to get things going. And, you know, I was, I was, I was pretty punch drunk. It was a, it was almost like it was a constant hit of dopamine. Um, every single time we had these conversations, and eventually, uh, I got my company. We started uh, or founded Empire, which eventually became uh, Ad Expose. And, um, you know, I, I got a ton out of it. I mean, I was able to, you know, talk 
talk with the top venture capitalist firms in the Northwest and in Silicon Valley, even though they didn't invest in me. Um, you know, I met a ton of people, both in the industry and also just kind of networking. You know, I hired employees. We had an office space. I mean, it was just, it, it was, it was a really, really fun time, as if I had a, a a dopamine injection every single step of the way. So, you know, no question, um, I, I I got a lot. Uh, if we flip the, the the page, we'll go to a chapter two, which essentially then is the reality. So, sure, I got a lot of stuff, a um, little notoriety, met a bunch of people. Uh, in the years to follow, ended up in an amazing role at Amazon uh, as a general manager in the early days of uh, AWS. Uh, but I also got some other stuff. Um, I actually got a divorce. Um, I ended up in a situation where, looking back on it, I didn't have the kind of relationship with um, my daughters that I had wanted to. Um, I was not connected uh, very emotionally with you know, my parents. I was very inconsistent in, the, um, in kind of the communication with them. And it was it was a very interesting time. Um, the other thing that I got was uh, I woke up one morning, and I remember kind of waking up and feeling a little bit disoriented and just kind of kind of off, beyond, not like just a regular it's off for a work day, but you know seriously off and. Um, I couldn't see out of my right eye. And I was like, well, that's you know, not normal. Um, so I, uh, I, I called Susan and I kind of like, you know, we kind of figured out the, the girl situation and I ended up going to uh, the optometrist up the street and so you know he sits me down in the, the little eye thing and he looks at my eye and um, first of all he is a very 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 calm person like he I don't think he really gets excited you know much really um, and he pushed back and he said um, he said well I can either call the ambulance or you can and I said uh, Okay, if they're on your speed dial, I guess. Um, and uh, as it turned out, um, I had had a stroke. Uh, I had a stroke in, it was in my eye, um, and you know, essentially the, the, the blood vessels burst and you know, oxygen to the, the veins or the, uh, excuse me, the um, nerves in my eye you know, died, so I you know, lost vision. And he essentially described it as if somebody had taken two cans of red paint and thrown them on the back of my eye. So uh, I, you know, I thought he gave very sound advice. So off to the hospital uh, I went, and uh, I checked in, and um, it was really funny. Well, not funny, but uh, interesting. So I'm laying there in the emergency room, and the doctor comes in, and he takes my blood pressure, and um, he kind of walks out, and he walks back in. Then there's another nurse there, and they take it again, and uh, my blood pressure at the time it was 260 over 180. Uh, which if any of you have normal blood pressure, that's probably like 2x if not more. Um, and uh, then, you know, see, more interesting, they brought in a group of students um, to <laughs> basically, I guess, just show them that, I don't know, I was just like, this is all whack, I'm just kind of freaking out. So, uh, but they essentially checked me into the hospital. I was in the hospital for four days. And, um, you know, while in the hospital, uh, they stuck me, you know, stuck an IV and they essentially, you know, brought my blood pressure way, 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 way down. And then they kind of systematically brought it back up and you know from there then you know I'm on a, a whole series of medications to keep it um, managed but the the point of the story is um, or the point of this particular piece is you know I'm in the hospital and I'm laying there in you know in the bed and you know I'm by myself and it was a it was a very very surreal feeling because I kind of did this index of all these things that I had been working for I'd been working you know I wanted this I wanted this I got this you know 2.5 cars I wanted you know blah 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 and all of a sudden it kind of didn't seem to matter at all um, I remember very clearly laying there thinking like um, you know ran cuss so I can say one bad word you know I remember kind of thinking there, like what the fuck like what what happened this is not 
you know, this is not how it was supposed to be. I had the list of things that you were supposed to have on your resume, and here I am in the hospital alone, you know, divorced, not feeling good about the relationship with the closest people in my life, and, and frankly, kind of staring death in the face. I mean, frankly, if the stroke had happened a smidge further back in my eye, it would have been in my brain, and, you know, odds are I probably would not have, have woken up. And it was a very frankly it was a very empty feeling it was a um, you know some people talk about bottoming out but it was a very very um, empty feeling and um, you know with with that as, as, as a backdrop you know I, I want to share with you now kind of the the things that I do in my life to kind of right align it having been at that particular point um, to you know essentially get yourself straight or get myself straight so um, uh, and these are, frankly, this is this is the advice that you know. I wish a, you know, I, I picture like a Morgan Freeman telling a Dave Cotter, you know, 15 years earlier, um, you know, out in the yard at Shawshank. Um, but uh, the, uh, you know, the first thing I, I would say is uh, I'm going to call it make the list. And what I mean by that is uh, there's a list of people in your life that actually really matter. Um, you know, there's a bunch, you know, you, we're all running around, you know, there's investors and blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, there's a list of maybe 10, 15 or so people that really absolutely matter in your life. And I would actually not just simply think about it, literally write down on a piece of paper at some point, you know, the 15 most important people in your life or who would you actually call if you had one hour to live. And you need to write their name down and you need to write kind of right next to their name, you know, why are they important to you? And you also need to think about why are you important to them? And, you know, just take the time to write it down. You don't even have to do anything more than just simply their name, why they're important to you, why you're important to them, and just look at that list and think about it. That's it. Um, I think that we, we take for granted and I think it seems so easy to kind of enumerate in your brain the people that matter and you kind of high five and, and interact with them on a case by case basis but the reality is when you write stuff down just like in business when you write it down and you put a little thought behind it it just gets burned that much more deeper in your psyche and I assure you will be very very surprised at who's on that list and you will probably have a little bit of a tinge of guilt um, that will hopefully cause you uh, to act on that. Um, the last person or the first person frankly on that list that you need to remember to put is yourself. Um, you are as important to that list as all the other people. So any list of the most important people in your life that does not include you is actually an incomplete list. Um, the second thing I would say then is, uh, I'm going to call it the investment, and it's not a, you know, I'm not talking about financial investment, but I'm talking about now that you've got that list, just make very small investments against people on that list on a regular basis. I think that, you know, in, in our, kind of in our tech world, for lack of a better word, we kind of go through these, you know, we think about finances or money, we kind of go through these plateau periods, and then it's like, oh, we had an event, or we had a vesting date, or, you know, boom, we got a, you know, 100,000, 50,000. 200 whatever and it kind of just you know goes like that and that's kind of the it's kind of the way a lot of us end up kind of seeing our financial I guess you know pass um, end up but when I'm talking about investing in that list I'm actually talking about more of a 401k mentality which is you know 5% or 10% of your paycheck gets deposited every single you know month and it just kind of happens on autopilot and you know so for, for me you know those kinds of small things are you know I take, you know my ex-wife and I like we take we take the girls to school and we pick them up from school and you know it's amazing what you learn in a 15 minute car ride with you know the girls talking to themselves or talking you know with you about what they did during their day uh, it can be simple things like you know if you have an opportunity to grocery shopping you know maybe you take your kid or you know we do trivia nights we do taco nights um, we go on walks the, the point the point being 
being dependent on your own situation. These aren't things where it's like, hey, you know, I've been a real shithead for 51, week, 51 weeks during the year. Let's throw everybody on a plane, go to Cabo, live it up. I'm a great guy and I'm going to come back and then be an asshole. Um, that doesn't work. Just do the small stuff. If you want to do the Cabo trip, fantastic, but don't do it in spite of doing the little stuff day in and day out because frankly, um, you're not going to get the kind of reward or connection that you want. Um, the other thing on that investment too is you've got to make certain to invest in yourself. One of the biggest mistakes I made is I didn't take care of myself. Um, you know, I still think that there are a handful of people in this audience would say, well, Dave, that hasn't really changed, but they shall rename a nameless. Um, but the fact of the matter is you've got to put yourself on the list and you have to invest back in yourself. You know, meditate, go on walks, work out, exercise. I don't care, you know, take, you know, take an anxiety pill. You have to do something in the startup world or if you're running a company to manage your stress and manage your anxiety. And so I really encourage you as you think about small investments on the other people, think of the really small investments uh, for yourself because you're no good to the first time, you know, you're no good to that first list if you're dead. Um, the third thing then is what I'm going to call the give, and that is, um, you know, you look around this room and you just, you know, you kind of do an index of the, the intellectual manpower or woman power, frankly, of the people in this room, and you know, we, we need to do more to give back to either the community, whether it's mentoring individuals, whether it's, you know, universities, charity events, etc. I don't say this necessarily because you need, it's a way for you to feel better or to, you know, uh, you know, make up for being a jerk, you know, the other you know, six days of the week, but it's important, I think, to recognize that, you know, our role and what we can offer society is bigger than just simply the Seattle startup community, that there are individuals out there and organizations that could really use our help, and, and, and donating time, and, you know, money happens, but donating time is one of the most rewarding things um, I think you can actually do, and it's a wonderful way to keep perspective on the things that seem to be really really, really critical um, in our lives on a daily basis when in reality in a larger scope um, they're you know they're kind they're they're kind of not um, so you know when I think of like kind of the lessons like kind of here's my you know here's my little story the list you know the investment the give it, to, to me you know, kind of the way I think of this and the way I want to kind of leave it with you guys as it relates to uh, the way we talk in the, the, the startup community is, um, you know, we're all going to bust our asses for, you know, the exit. Um, you know, we're going to start companies, we're going to do things, and in fact, you know, I ended up uh, starting a company. I took the two things that are the most important to me, kind of family and also technology, and I combined them to, you know, create Square Hub, and it's a, you know, it's it it actually serves as a daily reminder of the most important things. But the point, the main point is, whatever exit you're working for, I promise you there's a bigger exit. And I think as we work and we think about activities that go into the planning for, you know, the 50 million to Google, the 100 million, et cetera, it's always N plus one. There is one more exit that will always exist. And that is the big exit. And that is the big exit when you leave this earth. And, you know, the good news for all of you and all of me, and for me is you know you guys haven't had it yet I, I assume <laughs> Um, and it's it's super critical that as we plan as entrepreneurs for the smaller exit, you know, that bigger exit is really, really the one that matters. And small incremental investments and activities toward that big exit will actually make your smaller exit even that much more rewarding. And I, I guess I would just kind of leave you with that, um, you know, in, in my particular case, it, you know, the, the stroke was frankly kind of a stroke of, of, of luck because um, in a very strange way it kind of took losing vision in one eye in order for me to be able to see what was really important. And the fact of the matter is for as successful as Square Hub may or may not be, I'm very, very excited for my planning and activities for the big exit. So I hope, you know, I hope you enjoyed your beer. Um, you're picking up the tab and um, thank you. Give me a hug on that one. You got to give a hug after that uh, talk. That was very emotional and raw. That's part of what Startup Day is about.